Welcome everyone to the last video in the last section in the last chapter of your Calc 2 experience. In this video I have two theorems for you, an upgraded area formula and the arc length formula, and then we have three examples. So let's get to it. So in this case we have two functions, f of theta and g of theta. We want them to be continuous polar functions and we want f of theta to be greater than or equal to g of theta and both of them to be positive. Right? Uh, and this is for all theta in our range, whatever that is. In this case, it's alpha to beta. So in this case, when we say f of theta is greater than g of theta, we mean that it's farther from the origin. That's what it means to be greater when we talk about polar functions. So now we can talk about the area bounded between f of theta and g of theta as, and it's pretty much the same formula, integral from alpha to beta of 1 half, and now f of theta quantity squared, but now here's the new part, minus g of theta quantity squared. All of this uh, times our d theta. So we just subtract away the smaller one. In this case, it's our g of theta quantity squared. So let's go ahead and apply this to this problem. Find the area inside of the cardioid r equals 1 plus cosine theta and outside of the circle r equals 3 halves. And again, we're going to use the symmetry to help make this a little bit simpler. So I'm going to notice that this is one half of the area right here. And in fact, let me use a different color, a shade in blue. So I'm going to try to figure out the area of half of this region, and then I'm going to double it. OK, so let's figure out the area. Well, it's going to be from theta equals 0 to theta equals something, right? I need to know where these functions intersect. And if I know where they intersect, then I know what my beta value is, right? When I can stop integrating. All right, so that's going to be one issue. The other thing that I have to consider is what is my f and what is my g here, right? So which one is farther from the origin? So the farthest one from the origin is this line right here. And you can see that is a part of the cardioid. So the cardioid has the equation 1 plus cosine theta. And then the inner function, my g of theta, that's going to be the circle three halves. Okay, So if I integrate, find my area, I'm going to have 0 to beta, I don't know what that is yet, of 1 half of, and now my farther function is the cardioid, so that's my 1 plus cosine of theta, and remember I have to square all of this, uh, and unfortunately I have to FOIL it all out, minus my g of theta squared. So when I take 3 halves, and I'm going to square it all that times d theta. OK, so let's go ahead and tackle what is my beta value. right? When can I stop integrating? Well, that's where these functions intersect. So to figure out where they intersect, let me set them equal to one another. And I'm going to solve for theta. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, right, trying to isolate theta, I get cosine of theta equals 1 half. And when is cosine of theta equal to 1 half? Well, there's lots of values. right? So for instance, theta could be equal to pi over 3, or theta could be equal to negative pi over 3, or cosa, sorry, theta could be equal to 7 pi over 3. Again, there are infinitely many values, and you should choose, well, kind of the most simple correct one, right? So we can see it's in the first quadrant. Pi over 3 makes the most sense. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to pi over 3. And now I'm going to go ahead and start trying to simplify some of this stuff. So I'm going to still have my 1 half. When I FOIL out my 1 plus cosine theta, I get 1 plus 2 cosine theta plus cosine squared theta. And when I square my 3 halves, that gives me 9 fourths d theta. And now we can go ahead and start combining some like terms. So right, we see this 1 and we see this negative 9 fourths. Well, 1 is the same thing as 4 fourths, right? So when I have 4 fourths and I subtract away 9 fourths, that's going to go ahead and give me negative 5 fourths. So I still have my 1 half, negative 5 fourths. I'm going to have my 2 cosine theta. And remember, cosine squared theta, uh, it's hard to integrate that, right? So I'm going to use my power reduction formula. I'm going to go ahead and write that as 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta all of this times d theta. Maybe one more line of simplification here. So the integral from 0 to pi over 3, 
And now negative 5 eighths, right, because I'm distributing the 1 half. And then I have just cosine of theta. And then let's see, I have two 1 halves now, so that's going to give me a 1 fourth and plus 1 fourth cosine of 2 theta. All of this times d theta. And now I'm just about ready to integrate. I have one more set of like terms, right, the 1 fourth and the negative 5 eighths. Let me just go ahead and fix this on this line right here. So right, 1 fourth is the same thing as 2 eighths. So this is going to be negative 3 eighths once we combine our like terms. So now let me go ahead and scooch this over here. And now we're finally ready to integrate. So when I integrate negative 3 eighths, I get negative 3 eighths theta. When I integrate cosine, I get sine. And when I integrate cosine of 2 theta, well, I get 1 half sine of 2 theta. So I'm going to get a total of 1 eighth sine of 2 theta once I combine this 1 fourth along. Evaluate that from 0 to pi over 3. Luckily, when I plug in 0 into all of this, it just gives me 0. So I just need to plug in really the pi over 3. So into my first term, I get negative pi over 8. Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And then 1 eighth uh, sine of 2 pi over 3, which also happens to be root 3 over 2. All right, now just one line of simplification to give me my final answer. So let's see here. I have, looks like negative root 3 over 16 minus pi over 8. And that's my final answer. Oh, wait. Actually, it's not my final answer. Did you figure out what I did wrong? All right, I'll spoil it for you. This is the area of half right? Uh, I just figured out this purple area right here. I forgot to multiply by 2. So really, everywhere along here, if I multiply by 2 all along, then I will get the correct answer. So if I multiply by 2 here, this gives me 9 times root 3 over 8 minus pi over 4. And that is the area uh, that's inside the cardioid and outside of the circle. So we see these things get more complicated, right, when you're trying to figure out the area that's bounded between two polar functions. But again, uh, symmetry is our friend. So let's go ahead and move on to the last topic in Math 133, and that is length of a curve for a polar equation. So we have our polar equation, r equals f of theta, and we have theta is bound between some a and b. Then the length of the curve is given by the integral from a to b of the square root of r squared plus the derivative of r squared, again, all under the square root d theta. So let's apply this to two examples to wrap it up. Find the exact length of the polar curve r equals 2 cosine theta for theta ranging between 0 to 3 pi over 4. So we integrate from 0 to 3 pi over 4. We take the square root of r squared, so that's going to be 4 cosine squared theta, times the derivative squared. So the derivative of this is going to be negative 2 sine theta. So square that all under the square root there, d theta. So of course, when we take uh, negative 2 sine of theta and we square it, then we get 4 sine squared theta. And now, ooh, I see a cosine squared and a sine squared. So I could factor out that 4, and I'd have, well, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is the exact same thing as 1. So the square root of 1 is just, well, 1. And, of course, the square root of 4 is 2. So really, this is the integral from 0 to 3 pi over 4 of 2, d theta. So when I integrate with respect to theta, I just get 2 theta. And now I evaluate from 0 to 3 pi over 4. So this gives me my final answer of 3 pi over 2. All right, so that's not so bad. Uh, these can get more complicated, though. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Find the exact length of the polar curve r equals theta squared, theta ranging from 0 to pi. So this is actually a fun curve to sketch if you have a little bit of free time. But for the time being, let's go ahead and just find the length of it. So I'm going to go ahead and square r. That gives me theta to the fourth. I'm going to take the derivative, that's 2 theta, and I have to square that as well. Put it all under the square root and integrate from 0 to pi, d theta. Let's go ahead and simplify a little bit. I'm going to have the square root of theta to the fourth plus 4 theta squared. 
again, all under the square root. And now I can go ahead and factor out a theta squared from both terms. And the reason why I would want to do this is because, well, the square root of theta squared is something nice, right? It's just theta. Again, it would technically be the absolute value, but our theta values are ranging from 0 to pi, so it's already positive. Now this I can integrate. This is going to be a u substitution where u is theta squared plus 4, du is 2 theta d theta, so that gives me du over 2 is the same as theta d theta. Now, right, because I have a theta d theta to trade in. So this is going to be the integral of the square root of u. Remember, u is my theta squared plus 4. And then my theta d theta becomes du over 2. So when I integrate this, I get my 1 half times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. A little bit of 2's cancel out here, and I get 1 third. And instead of u, let's go ahead and substitute back in our theta squared plus 4 raised to the 3 halves. Now remember, I was supposed to integrate this from 0 to pi. So I'm going to need to evaluate from 0 to pi. Uh, so when I plug in pi here, I'm going to get, well, pi squared plus 4 all raised to the 3 halves. And if I plugged in 0, I would get 4 raised to the 3 halves. Well, 4 to the half power is going to be 2, right? It's the same as the square root. And if I cube that, I get 8. All right, and that is the final final answer. So with that, I mean, I've had a great time making these videos. I hope you've taken a lot from them. Good luck on all your upcoming homework, quizzes, exams. Take care.